Friends, today we are here to discuss a very important topic which is called Exim Financing or International Trade Financing. My name is Satinda Bhatia. I am a professor of finance at the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade and I shall be happy to carry you along with the different facets of international trade finance. India is becoming a very important player in the international markets. Exporters and importers both are approaching the international markets and therefore all of them have to know how to be able to finance their exports or imports. The Indian government has set up a very vast trade finance infrastructure and so have the multilateral institutions. Today we are going to learn about the role of the government institutions, the private institutions, as well as the multilateral institutions in the provision of trade credit for the purpose of boosting exports from India. Let us now begin this journey. So Exim Finance or International Trade Finance, really what does it mean? How is it different from the normal bank financing? Maybe for SMEs, the entire business loans, as we call it. Large firms also take. So this terminology, trade finance, what are its special characteristics? Who or which institutions are disbursing this credit? The digital innovations, are they changing the face of trade finance? And what exactly is the role of banks and other institutions in the provision of trade finance? Let us first come to the meaning of trade finance. Trade finance, friends, is financing just one particular trade transaction. It is not financing the entire business. It is not even financing an entire project, though there may be projects that are taken up for the purpose of exports. Only those we will say come under trade transaction. So since it is not a business loan, the lenders are not interested in seeing your balance sheet in seeing what your assets are or what your liabilities are because assets and liabilities are of the business but we are not asking for a business loan we are asking for a particular transaction loan so obviously the lenders are interested in knowing the strength of this transaction the strength of the transaction is determined by the ability of the importer to pay and the exporter to perform. Now, how does one assess the ability of the importer to pay? I am sure in many other courses, you have come across certain trade finance instruments. The most important are the letters of credit. I am sure you have heard of them because at least as far as India or even developing countries are concerned, letters of credit form the backbone of trade credit. Nearly 50% of bank intermediated finance is rooted through the letter of credit. So as you have studied in other courses, a letter of credit simply is a statement by the importer's banker to the exporter's banker that once they receive the documents concerning the shipment of exports along with all other documents like certificates of origin, packing list which gives the description of the goods. The moment they get those documents and they verify that those documents are in order, the banker will release the payment 
to the exporter's banker. This is a very high surety to the exporter because now no more does he have to depend upon the word of the importer. No more does he have to assess the ability of the importer to pay because there is a document, the letter of credit, which is the banker's word that the payment will be made. In fact, based on this letter of credit, which the exporter has received from the importer's banker, the exporter can approach any commercial bank in India or maybe even outside India to get what we say pre-shipment credit and post-shipment credit. The words explain themselves. Pre-shipment loan is a loan taken before the goods are shipped. In other words, the purpose is mainly manufacturing of goods. The exporter may have to purchase some raw materials, hire some space. All that requires money and pre-shipment credit is mainly for that. Similarly, there are other facilities that bankers provide like guarantees. So it is not a letter of credit now, but a simple guarantee. The banker guarantees the payment to the exporter's banker. It is different from letter of credit in the sense that the documents regarding shipment and documents giving the origin and description of goods and services have not to go to the importer's banker where he will verify with the first letter which he had stated as to what should be the description and when should the goods be shipped. So guarantees are simpler but letter of credit gives more confidence to the exporter at least in India and in many other developing countries. Now, why am I saying in India and other developing countries? Are the rules different in developed countries? Well, the rules are not different. The bankers in USA and in entire Europe and other places can also offer letters of credit. But remember, when bankers issue letters of credit, they charge a commission. And these commissions could be very high, which means the cost of trade credit becomes high for the exporter. And if the exporter is not exporting specialized items, then definitely his margins are low. Therefore, high cost of trade credit may actually make his transaction entirely unviable and he may have to pull out of exports. Therefore, definitely all exporters are looking for such provisions where trade credit can be provided at a reasonable cost. Therefore, the trend that we now see is that exporters are shifting from letter of credit to what we call an open account transaction. What is an open account transaction? An open account transaction is where there is no bank in between. All the documents regarding shipment and other documents which I mentioned before, the exporter is directly sending to the importer. The importer's payment is not routed through his banker. It is not the importer's banker paying to the exporter's banker. It is the importer paying the exporter. Normally we say any direct route is the shortest route. It saves time it saves cost. Surely, so does it in trade credit. When the importer pays directly to the exporter, it reaches faster without any complications. But the question is, will it ever reach? 
Will the importer really pay? What if he turns his back and the exporter has sent him the goods? It is not possible for the exporter to go, let us say, to Brazil and fight court cases over there. It is not even worth it. That is why there was the bank intermediation where the banker would release the documents to the importer only and only if he paid. That route is called the documents against payment. So one, as you saw, was the letter of credit where the banker himself pays. If the importer has to pay, the banker is giving the documents to the importer only after he has paid. Or there is another term we call documents against acceptance. So the importer hasn't paid, but he has accepted to pay. How does he accept to pay? Not through words. He has to stamp on the documents the word accepted with his seal, with his signature. So that again, if there is a default, there can be an action against the importer. The crucial thing as you see in bank intermediation is that the importer cannot get the documents of title to the goods unless and until either he has paid or he has accepted to pay. Or of course the first one where I said the banker himself pays to the exporter's banker. But if it is an open account transaction, there is no support from the bank. The importer has to pay directly to the exporter. So definitely there is a lot of risk to the exporter. Imagine you sending goods all the way, let us say to any city, let us say Sydney in Australia. You have manufactured the goods. You have paid a lot of money on shipment of the goods, on insurance of the goods. The goods reach the buyer and then the buyer runs away. Are you going to go there, fight court cases? So you, you can see the amount of risk. That is why banks are needed. But then I will show you later as to how these open account transactions are increasing in the international market today. Why are they increasing and how much it is? Open account transactions today form almost 60 to 70 percent of total transactions that are funded by way of trade credit, which means the banks are handling just about 40 percent of total trade credit business. And this includes the private uh, institutions. So if there is so much risk to the exporters, why are open account transactions rising? One, there have been a lot of digital innovations. All of us have heard of blockchain technology. The strength of blockchain technology is that it provides security to the transaction. And that is what we had wanted when we wanted bank intermediation. We were looking for safe, secure transactions. Today, technology is doing that. Today, even other technology like IoT, Internet of Things, 3D printing, all of that is changing the entire face of trade credit. Many material that had to go to different places now doesn't have to. The importer can just print the raw material that he would otherwise have imported. Internet of Things, it is helping you trace your goods. You don't perhaps need as much insurance now because minute to minute your computers are linked to the ship. Every second you are getting information of what is happening to your goods. So even the possibilities of fraud are minimized. That is why the open account transactions are increasing. And because they are increasing, inter-firm credit, which is either the exporter provides finance to the importer or the reverse, the importer provides finance to the exporter. When does the importer provide finance to the exporter? As we have seen, the importer has to pay to the exporter. 
that's not news but generally the importer would want to pay only when he receives the goods and not before the international market is so competitive that importers don't even pay when the goods reach them even after the goods have reached them they ask for maybe 30 additional days 60 additional days 90 additional days and so on why simply because they have the bargaining strength it's not that they are not able to pay they have the bargaining strength maybe they are big buyers so they can dictate their terms and exporters as i had said if you are not selling specialized items then you will have to bow down to the terms of the buyers and one such term is always asking for a period of credit so you have to ensure that as an exporter you have finances not only for manufacturing and making the shipment of goods and paying insurance in case you have to uh, of course on fob basis if you are exporting then you don't pay for insurance the buyer pays for insurance but you need finance for this entire period which may be even six month period and then you need finance also for the credit period which the importer is asking how do you get this finance normally as i had said earlier you would like to take a pre-shipment credit from your banker usually as i had said they give on the base basis of the export order or the letter of credit but if it is interform credit it means you are not approaching your banker you are requesting the importer to pay you in advance so that once the money is with you in advance then you can use this money to manufacture and meet other expenses so advance payment from the importer yes that is what is interform credit and if you are a big exporter or an exporter of a specialized item please insist on it similarly it could be the exporter is providing finance to the importer the importer has to make the payment but is short of money the exporter helps him how does he help him not really giving him money but extending the period within which he has to make the payment instead of 30 days he might say it is 180 days which is really providing finance for those many extra days so in short i just want to say that while bank credit is extremely important for us the developing countries with extra use of technology with more intensive use of technology and of course if the importer is a party with whom you've had very long relationship then you must explore open account transaction and must explore interform credit but coming back to institutional credit again as i said banks are important and pre shipment credit from banks will be available definitely in as a rupee loan but it might appear strange it will also be available as a foreign currency loan now you will say as to why would exporters want it as a foreign currency loan simply because foreign currency loan is available at international rates they will be linked to libor libor is london interbank offer rate or maybe euribor which is euro interbank offer rate now these interbank offer rates are definitely far lower than the interest rates prevailing in the indian market so a lot of indian exporters are taking pre shipment credit in foreign currency in short we also call it pcfc usually the period for which we get pcfc is 12 months over a period of time it has risen from 6 months to 9 months and now 12 months during march of 2020 due to covid situations the rbi increased this period to 15 months for all exports 
that would take place until 31st July 2020. This was because RBI understood that exporters are going through lean times and therefore it might be difficult for them to complete all their activities within scheduled time. But of course, exports that take place after 31st July, PCFC and also post-shipment credit. As I told you that although the exporters have shipped their goods, they might still require finance because they need finances for that extra trade credit period which they have given to the importers. Similarly, in India, we have specialized banks like Exim Bank of India. Exim Bank of India also provides pre-shipment and post-shipment credit both in rupees and foreign currency. But their main focus is on lines of credit. Lines of credit are credit given for a period like three years or four years to overseas countries and they are told that during this three or four period up to a defined limit they can buy anything from India. So Exim Bank pays uh, to the exporters. Exporters do not have to wait to be paid by the importers or the governments of the importing countries and they get a trade credit period from Exim Bank of India. But the exporters do not have to wait. So this is a very big facility. And in Interform Credit, today everybody is talking about supply chain finance. So very quickly, I will say that supply chain finance is also getting credit from the concerned party but it could also be through a bank and nowadays banks are also playing a very important role in the provision of supply chain finance. Basically, it relates to post shipment credit when the exporter has already got bills in his hand, receivables in his hand. So remember I said that the importer asks for a credit period but if the exporter wants money quickly what does he do? He has the bills, he can discount these bills with his banker. So that's called discounting of bills. All right. Of course the banker will charge some discount fees and therefore the exporter will get the full value of receivable minus the commission which the banker charges. But the banker decides what is the commission depending upon the credit worthiness of the exporter. Now sometimes exporters are very small, SME sector as we say. So then commissions payable by them will be large. However, if they have buyers who have very high credit worthiness, then based on the credit worthiness of the buyer, they discount the bills of exchange. So once their buyers have accepted their bills of exchange, that means the buyer has accepted to pay and then the buyer is a very wealthy party. So based on the credit worthiness of the buyer, the bills will be discounted either by an Indian institution or by an international institution. So this changes the game altogether because the exporter is not now having to incur high cost of trade credit because he is small. Because his buyer is big, he is able to get trade credit at low rates of interest. That is what supply chain finance is. Getting uh, trade credit, in other words, discounting of accepted bills of exchange looking into the credit worthiness of the buyer. We will go on with the bank finance, which also provides finance to the importers. All right. So the overseas banks can provide finance to the Indian importers. And similarly, Indian banks can provide finance to the importers overseas. All right. We call it buyer's credit. 
So a lot of our importers ask for buyer's credit from the institutions overseas and again as I said institution overseas are preferred because you get foreign currency linked trade credit. Uh, coming back to Exim Bank, Exim Bank as I told you provides the same but they have medium to long term focus. Therefore, they are generally giving lines of credit. They are generally financing projects or overseas investments. Uh, there are other specialized institutions like ECGC, Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. Now, ECGC also provides a very crucial service to the exporters because it is ensuring the credit. So generally you insure uh, goods, you insure so many other things like motor cars, but here we are insuring credit, export credit insurance. So they are providing this very vital facility to the exporter, the credit insurance. In other words, that the importer will be able to make the payment. So you are buying this insurance from ECGC and uh, therefore definitely as an exporter you are at ease. Uh, there are also foreign uh, credit agencies which are operating in India. For example, the Coface. Coface is the export credit insurance agency from France and it is also doing good business. Uh, so uh, the exporters, as I said, if they are not using letter of credit, then and they are going in for open account transaction, particularly then credit insurance becomes very, very vital. So earlier I had said open account transactions are increasing because of improvements in digital technology. But the second reason why open account transactions are rising because export credit agencies are getting set up and they are expanding their reach. In other words, offering credit insurance in a much uh, diversified way and the volumes are rising. So um, letter of credit, uh, uh, post shipment credit, um, bill discounting, uh, next guarantees uh, from the banks. Uh, but today you will see that there is also something called factoring. Factoring is also bill discounting, but it could be even more wide. Now, what does that mean? That means that the factoring agency, which can also be called simply a factor. A factor is not only discounting the bills, he is actually helping the exporter to identify which product to sell, which market to sell, what should be the terms of trade credit period to be given to the importer and so on. In other words, he becomes a business partner and not somebody who is just providing the finance to the exporter in advance. Definitely, since he's giving all this service to the exporter, the charges are going to be even higher. But there are a lot of exporters who actually find it worthwhile to use factoring services. Because as I said, if you are a new time exporter or you're exploring a new market, or even if it is an established product and an established market, you never know when there can be problems. Therefore, if you have somebody who is guiding you all the time, especially when you go to uh, lesser known countries, uh, or I should say countries with a lesser developed trade infrastructure, then definitely that helps. But crucial thing is the factor has already given the money in advance on the bills. That means he has discounted the bills and he will wait to be paid by the importer at the end or at the maturity of the transaction. What if the importer does not pay at that time? Who bears this loss? Is it the factor or can the factor come back to the exporter and ask for his money back? 
So we say both kind of facilities are available even in India. So right in the beginning when they form a contract with the factor, the exporter has to specify whether he would like it to be a contract with recourse to the exporter or does he want the contract without recourse to the exporter. What does that mean? That means if the importer does not pay, does the exporter have a right to come back to the exporter? So that is what we say with recourse. If he does not have a right to come back to the exporter, we say it is without recourse. In other words, a without recourse transaction means the factor has to take the risk. A with recourse transaction means the exporter has to be ultimately responsible for the transaction. I don't think it requires any guessing. A without recourse transaction definitely will be much more expensive as compared to a with recourse transaction. But the benefit of without recourse to the exporter is the exporter has got his money and can have a very nice sleep after that because even though there may be problems at the importer's end, he doesn't have to worry. The loss will be borne only by the factor. So that is why factoring is a very crucial way of provision of trade credit in many countries even in China. Uh, in India, it is growing very steadily and uh, definitely as uh, you exporters are exploring new markets, definitely we will see this factoring services grow even faster. As I said, both banks and non-banks are into this. So we have like State Bank of India has set up its subsidiary. It is called SBI Factors. So the subsidiary is just providing factoring services. Now I had mentioned specialized bank like Exim Bank. Does Exim Bank provide factoring services? Well, I would say almost like a factoring service. Why almost? Because I had said that Exim Bank is dealing in long term projects medium term projects all right which means anything from over one year to maybe even 10 years you know when big projects are taken overseas maybe construction of an airport in another country construction of a railway line in another country and so on that requires a lot of time so receivables for those contracts which will be uh, raised gradually over the three year time period is what the Exim Bank discounts. But the Exim Bank is very clear. It will not have a recourse to the exporter. And that is good news for the exporter. So this where they do not have a recourse to the exporter and the transaction is a long term transaction is what we call forfeiting. So forfeiting is definitely without recourse to the exporter. Factoring may involve recourse to the exporter or may not involve depending upon what are the terms of the contract. So um, again, uh, banks, um, just to repeat, uh, they are giving letter of credit guarantees they are giving bill discounting facility they are giving factoring facility these are commercial banks they are also issuing guarantees on behalf of the exporter you know just like the exporter is afraid that the importer will not pay the importer is afraid supposing he has given you advance money and then you run away and do not sell the goods do not deliver the goods so he also wants a performance guarantee so banks are also giving performance guarantee on behalf of the exporters because they have to show this to the importers. These are various facilities that are given by commercial banks. Exim Bank, I've already said, is into long term trade finance deals. OK, and so lines of credit and forfeiting services is important. Interform credit, I said, 
from uh, the exporter to the importer or vice versa and nowadays as far as banks are concerned even supply chain finance where just the accepted bills are put up on the supply chain platforms and any banker uh, can uh, quote his rate as to what will be the discount that he will charge the exporter. This has become therefore very competitive. Any exporter with accepted bills of exchange just posts the bill on the platform. The other bankers take a look at the transaction and they quote a rate. This is what we said, the supply chain finance. The other service, as I said, uh, by the banks is that they are collecting documents on behalf of the exporter and passing on to the importer either against payment or either against acceptance. So uh, what do we see therefore in XM Finance? Very safe, very secure transaction as opposed to a business loan. Why? We have said when you take a business loan, maybe your business doesn't do well and therefore you have a problem returning the loan and therefore there is a lot of risk to the lender but in exim finance or trade finance it is not so why either it is backed by letter of credit which is a banker's word and it may also be a confirmed letter of credit especially when uh, maybe the banker's uh, credit worthiness in your eyes is not very high then you tell the importer's banker that it has to be further confirmed by another banker again okay, there will be confirmation charges but as far as you are concerned it is again secure transaction if it is secure for you it is secure for the lender and therefore based on the letter of credit which may be a confirmed letter of credit, you can easily get pre-shipment and post-shipment loan. And what about the return of money? If you have taken PCFC in foreign currency, then the moment you get export bills or receivables from the importer, you discount those bills with your banker and your PCFC will be converted into post-shipment credit. Very simple way. All right, that is why mainly PCFC is provided in foreign currency only by the banks, not by the private institutions. Private institutions, which are non-banks, are providing therefore only post-shipment credit. Uh, but it is very safe. As I said, each transaction is either backed by a banker's word or by insurance uh, through an export credit insurance agency like ECGC or COFACE or any other foreign institution and therefore even the bankers capital requirements on trade finance is very low as compared to the capital requirement on other loans. So it is very advantageous and very cost effective for the banks to give trade finance. Besides multilateral institutions like Asian Development Bank or even IFC, International Finance Corporation, which is a sister organization of World Bank, what is their role? Their role is that they build up capacity of domestic banks. They provide credit to our banks so that our banks can give credit to exporters and importers not only providing credit they actually participate in certain loans what we say co-financing of loans or risk participation agreements what we want to say is that there is a very developed trade finance infrastructure both by national governments as well as multilaterally to ensure that trade credit remains safe remains secure and is available at nominal rates of interest. Therefore, I uh, definitely uh, uh, am sure that you are going to find it easy to obtain credit um, and explore new markets uh, as you are able to manage your financial, your commercial, your political risks also through institutions like ECGC. Trade finance has been 
a very important topic as you saw today. Many people think that there are a few complications as far as providing credit is concerned. But today we have seen the complications can all be erased. Credit is available, first of all, because there is a doubt in the minds of exporters whether easy credit is available. Today we have seen that there is a vast institutional framework to provide credit. Not only easy credit, but credit at international rates and backed by the insurance agencies, the specialized export credit agencies, as well as the Exim Bank of India, which has come forward. Surely, with all these facilities, along with the inter-firm trade credit, which we have seen is also a very important part, all of this will help surely to boost India's exports. I wish you the very best and very good luck in taking India forward on this export journey. Thank you.